Hello, and welcome to the Lambda School Git Fork and Clone video. I'm Dan Frainer, an instructor here at Lambda School, and I'll be your instructor today. The prerequisites for this video are the terminal introduction to the terminal video and the introduction to Git video. In the last video, we learned what Git is and why, and as software developers, we use it. In this video, we will learn how to begin using Git, and we will learn about an important tool for using Git, GitHub. We learned in the last video that Git is a program that runs on our computer and tracks the changes we've made to our projects. There are many ways to store and share these projects among teams, the most popular being a cloud storage service called GitHub. GitHub gives us a central place to store our projects. We call this place a repository, or repo for short. This lesson we will learn how to interact with a repo on GitHub. GitHub is one of many types of cloud-based Git storage solutions, but it's not the only one. Others include, include GitLab and Bitbucket. At Lambda School, we'll use GitHub primarily, but know that these, there are more than one option for this service. Before we start, let's get one thing clear. GitHub and Git are two separate things. Git is the program we use locally to track our changes, uh, and GitHub is a service that is offered to store our Git track projects. We like to think of GitHub like you would uh, a photo sharing service like Flickr or Ender. GitHub is an important place for the open source software community. If you don't know what that means yet, don't worry. Uh, and building, and teams building proprietary software alike. If you do not yet have a github.com account, please do so now. It's easy and free to create an account. When signing up for an account, please remember this will be a professional account, so give yourself a GitHub name that can be used professionally. We will learn how to create our own GitHub repository at a later time, but for now, we're gonna learn how to interact with an existing repo, which is the most common interaction you'll have on GitHub. You'll notice as we navigate to a repo, there's a lot of information on this page. We'll go through the most important parts of this repo. First, you'll see the name of an organization or developer that owns this repo. In most cases, this is the person that created the repo. In this case, it's Lambda School, and the name of the repo is Git Practice. If there's a name below it, which we'll see in a moment, that means that this person has copied the repo from the original owner. This is known as forking, and we'll learn how to do this in just a few moments. Second, we have a watch and star. Watch will inform you of changes, and star is like giving a like or on Facebook or an upvote on Reddit. Those are fairly unimportant to us now. There's a lot of information down here, and we'll eventually learn what all of this is, but for now, it doesn't concern us. Next to all of that is the fork button. This is what we'll use right now. This allows us to create a copy of the repository on our own GitHub account and work on it ourselves. Before we start to work on any project we haven't created ourselves, we must fork it. Here we are on the live GitHub page now. We can see we have the name of who created the account, of the owner of the repo. We have the name of the repo. We have all of our information, watch and star, and the most important is the fork button. We can see that nobody has forked it yet, right? So we know that we are on Lambda Schools GitHub account because that's the name in the upper left-hand corner. We are signed in, I'm signed in as my name, and all we have to do to create our own copy, otherwise known as forking it, is just to press the fork button. You'll see when you hover over it, it'll say fork your own copy to your account. Press the button and we'll see a little animation happen. Choose which account, you shouldn't have to choose your account. And now we'll see 
It should be taking a few seconds. And now we have forked an account. We can see now in the upper left-hand corner that it is me. We're on my own account page. We're still using the Git practice, but now we can see that it's been forked from lambdaschool.com. So the original owner of the account is underneath. If we go there, we'll notice that Lambda School doesn't have a fork from because they are the ones that created this account. But on my copy, we'll see that it is forked from them. Once I see my name in the upper left hand corner, I am now able to start work on this project. The next step after forking the repo is to clone. Now that we've forked, we can clone it. Cloning is the process of telling Git on our computer to go and get all the files uh, from GitHub and do some cool behind the scenes things for us. In order to clone a repo, we need to first make sure that we have forked it in our on our own page. We can tell that to see if we see our name in the upper left hand corner. Once we've determined that we have properly forked the repo, that we are on our own account, now we can go click this big green button. When I click this button, there's gonna be a drop down. There's a lot of information in it, but we only care about one piece. We care about this address right here. You're gonna see open in desktop, you're gonna see download, you're gonna see a lot of things, but we don't wanna click any of those. We are only concerned with that address. Now you can highlight it in control C, uh, you can write the address down and type it out yourself if you'd like to, or they've added a convenient little copy to clipboard button right here. Once we have that address, and we can even copy it up there just to make sure we have it down, paste it up there, excuse me. Now we can go into our terminal and clone it. So remember, forking happens on GitHub, and cloning is going to happen on Git. Now that I have my terminal open, remember from our terminal video, we can LS, make sure that we know we're in the right place. I'll clear it all out. Now we're gonna use our first git command. We're gonna type the word git. That's telling the computer that we would like to use the git program. And we'll give git a command now. We're gonna give git the clone command. Clone, as I said before, is going to essentially go and download all the files, but not only do that, it's gonna set up a lot of behind the scenes stuff for us. If we do go and select the download button, then we're gonna to have to set all of that stuff up for ourselves. That's only something an advanced user should do. So don't worry about doing that. Just make sure you copy the address. We're gonna say git clone, and then we're gonna paste the address right into it. Now, I have some things set up um, where it's gonna automatically download for me. It should automatically download for you as well. But there's a chance that Git might ask for your username and password. Uh, enter your username, press enter, and then if you see a password screen, uh, you'll see a little key, and you'll enter your password, and it looks like nothing's happening. Don't worry, you're actually entering your password. That's just a security feature where it doesn't look like it's entering anything. Enter your password as you normally would and press enter. But in this case, it'll allow us just to download and clone ourselves. So I type git, I type clone, and then I paste that address in there. Oop. Looks like I already have it. All right. And now we're gonna see a lot of stuff happening. We'll see cloning into Git practice. What this is doing is this creating a directory for us called Git practice. It will then give us some downloading information. And then when we see 100% and done, that means that Git has cloned everything for us and it has set it up for us. And now it will have built a new file called Git practice. Let's check it out. We'll see. 
get practice is right there. So it's going to give us a file or a directory with the name of the repo, which in this case is git practice. And we can ls into this. We can cd into git practice and then ls and see that we have the whole file in there for us. And that's it. Now that we have the file cloned or the project cloned onto our own computer, we can start working on it ourselves. Congratulations, you've downloaded all the associated files and have successfully set up Git to track our changes automatically. And that's it. In the next video, we'll talk about what we do when we've made changes to our files. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you the next time.